can we go beyond urban industrial practices by shaping the questions that address third millennial challenges differently? And what has experimental architecture got to do with solving some of the greatest questions in the universe? Douglas Adams famously addresses this paradoxical relationship between questions and answers in his Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where a species of pan-dimensional hyper-intelligent beings, white mice, invent a powerful supercomputer called Deep Thought. They ask it for the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything. Well, it takes deep thought seven and a half million years to calculate the ultimate answer, which we all know is 42. Unfortunately, the question is way too general for the ultimate answer to have any meaning for the white mice. So they invent another supercomputer. This one's called Earth, and it's designed to produce the ultimate question to life, the universe, and everything. Now, this takes another 10 million years of deliberation, during which time Earth is destroyed by Vogons. The questions that society produces invites answers through scientific research and technological development. And we encounter these every day through our experience of cities. In fact, we can think of the urban environment as being a kind of laboratory in which science and technology acquire value and meaning. In fact, Francis Bacon, father of the scientific method, invented this place, New Atlantis. It's a utopian city that's based around modern laboratory practices. And if you actually look at the details of this drawing, even though it was imagined about 500 years ago, you'll see the seeds of our contemporary cities. So in the foreground, we have communications. In the castle, we have advanced optics. And towards the back around the garden shed, genetic modification. But in the third millennium, we're no longer asking questions about whether we can design bigger, more powerful, and precise machines. We're concerned with environmental welfare. And as our planetary systems become more chaotic and more extreme, we're asking really, really complex questions about our long-term survivability. So what does a city look like that's designed according to questions that address third millennial challenges involved with sustainability and survival? This is where experimental architecture comes into its own. It's my field of research. And it's a discipline that arose out of the height of the modern era when a group of avant-garde architects decided to liberate populations from the top-down atomic-scale control of modern science. Now, while they fully appreciated that modern cities were efficient, they also found them oppressive. So they went about inventing alternative ways of living and making and working that were more conducive with people's idiosyncrasies and therefore they propose to restore their creative freedoms. And it's on this basis that I'd like to propose that a series of laboratories could help us make a transition from industrial to third millennial cities. Now, I'm project leader of Persephone. It's a laboratory-like space, and a version of it is shown in this architectural rendering. Persephone conducts experiments that ask questions about how international collaborators can come together to build gargantuan ecosystems that uh, started from scratch and can support their populations indefinitely. It's a real-world project, and it's set in a starship. Yes, I said starship. If you're thinking Star Trek, then think beyond that. Now, because Persephone is a laboratory, it needs to be introduced inside a starship hull before it can travel across the universe, where it beats with life inside it like a giant heart, perhaps within something like this starship spider, a 
concept vessel by Frederick de Wilde, which proposes to link the dark and visible universes. So Persephone is part of the Icarus Interstellar Group's portfolio of work, and they're an international consortium of aerospace engineers that are dedicated to producing an interstellar research platform in Earth's orbit within the next 100 years. And Persephone is specifically concerned with the course of human development if we are fully invested in the productivity of our soils. Now, you may not think of soils as being a technology, but an acre of fertile earth can produce a horsepower of work every day. So we can think of soils as being organic, programmable, semi-living operating systems, provided we don't kill them first and turn them into bricks. So, that's the theory. Now let's see what happens in practice when we use these questions to generate soil prototypes. This is a picture that was taken in the chemistry outreach department at Newcastle University, where I work. We're asking, what is a soil? By running salts through activated gels to look at the patterns that they produce. And this is the Hylozoic Ground Installation. It's a collaboration with architect Philip Beasley and engineer Rob Gourbet. And it was shown at the Venice 2010 Architecture Biennale. Now it's looking at how we can take these dynamic chemistries in soils and scale them to architectural dimensions so that we can inhabit them. So here we have activated chemistries, which are these yellow globlets, and they're entangled with a cybernetic matrix, which forms a technological um, soil-like structure. Now, this works in a way that can best be described as inhabiting a giant nose. Think of the gallery space as being a sinus, and these activated chemistries as smart snot glands. Now, they can record and taste and smell your presence through the carbon dioxide produced on your breath, turn it into tiny crystals that become skins, that form structures that are about the size of your little fingertip. And this is the future Venice project. It's a chemically programmable soil-like structure that's scaled to the dimensions of a city. So using programmable droplets to literally grow an artificial reef-like structure around the wooden foundations of Venice, the proposal is to spread the base and stop it from sinking so fast into the mud on which it's founded. Now, this is an upgrade, Future Venice 2. It's a collaboration with Artwise Curators and Idea Laboratory for the 56th Venice Biennale. Now, it's proposing a new island for the city out of pollution from the lagoon, which forms a soil-like system. And we're taking a laboratory approach to this challenge by cultivating microalgae with microplastics to form a combined material, which is a biofilm. And we sink this into the ground to form a island-like structure and then this also becomes a resource for future generations as a functional Earth. Think of the way that chalk is produced by the accretion of tiny marine organisms. This is the Hanging Gardens of Medusa. It's a collaboration with Nebula Sciences, and it takes the form of a tiered laboratory garden. On the outer layer is hardy biological organisms, or cacti, and on the inner layer, we see soft chemistries, lifelike chemistries. And so this is launched into the stratosphere where it's asking questions about what the technological capabilities of the soils need to be to support these different life forms in extreme conditions so that we can inhabit new worlds. Experimental architecture has the capacity to explore third millennial challenges in a variety of ways. But out of the laboratories, we do not see the rise of industrial cities. We see the emergence of living cities. So what's a living city like? A living city is forged by fertile earths. 
It sounds like a stomach rather than a cacophony of engines. It smells like a body rather than an oil refinery. Although these are not primitive environments and they're not mud huts, these are rich landscapes that are blossoming with the poetry of life. They are warm to the touch and they're shockingly biodiverse. In fact, the cities that spring from Persephone's soils could be accused of having too much life. By constructing laboratories and conducting experiments that ask different kinds of questions about our third millennial challenges, that exceed the capacities of our modern chemistry laboratories, our stratosphere, and even interstellar space, we may not only go beyond urban laboratory and industrial practices, but also save ourselves 17 and a half million years of misplaced effort. And perhaps a better question than the one that we started off with is not about how we shape the questions that address new millennial challenges differently, but what the consequences will be if we choose not to. Thank you.